a lot of equipment unnecessarily. All the people can be saved just by using the right tools. PP testing happens through a century old technology, which is called PR microscope. That technology has not changed. And this technology has a limitation. The technology can sensitivity is a problem. Which means that you know, some only about 40 to 50 people out of 100 people in the TB get diagnosed and put on treatment. And the rest, 40 to 50 people are told they don't have TB. So these people go back to the community thinking that they don't have TB and they give TB to the other people. Earlier, the molecular tools were more centralized, which made it very difficult because all the people are in the collection. And the illness system was not working because it was putting some money and reporting. It took a long time and patients were not back. The program, they don't get the treatment, they go back and they never come back again. So it completely failed. So they have to have better diagnostic tools which can be done as an investment to the person. So fortunately, uh, one technology came about seven years ago and another technology has come recently, which is ProMAC. Uh, all these technologies are now enabling TB diagnosis through molecular methodology at the right of the peripheral level, at the place where I'm so that has changed the entire outlook. We will eliminate microscopy completely and replace all microscopy with a molecular test, which will ensure that all TB patients are diagnosed in time and put on the And that is how it will prevent the transmission of TB and also prevent further spread and the threat of the spread. So that's where ProNet comes in the future. Today, globally, ProNet is the only platform which can actually be deployed at the microscope. Even the earlier platform which she started could only go up to a district level, couldn't go to the peripheral level. So there was still a limitation. And that is why you see uh, with all this technology is available, we can reduce 70% of testing still so happens on my Only about 25% of the testing So that has to change. So that makes it not a number of patients, not a response to the So these molecular tools are also enabling that. So I'm the first part of project. Not only are you diagnosing TB, but you are also finding out if the patient will and what drug will work for the patient to give the right drug so that the patient gets better and it is not spreading the disease of the patient. So in the last, if you ask me 90 months, what has happened? A decision has been taken that molecular tests have to be introduced, microscopy has to be replaced, and the tools are getting validated and approved and so on. All that has happened. And some implementation has started. India, for example, has already rolled out ProMAC in a fairly large way. And we are very clear that in the next two, two years or so, they want to replace the So I think from what I have seen, a lot of momentum now, because nobody has realized as I said, time is running out, elimination targets are coming very closer. And now there is a time for action. So the tools are there, the will is there. Implementation has just started happening. So hopefully in the next 19 months, we should start seeing a lot of energy here in spending. So when you say active case spending, what you are trying to do is to go and reach out to people who don't know that they are TV. But they have. So you are trying to pick up those people up and take them into the program. So now that means that you have to screen now for patients. So like family and relatives of relatives and friends of patients who have been close contacts of the patient, the patient. Uh, we are talking about slum areas, for example, where the conditions are not great and TB spreads much more in this kind of situations. We are talking about, uh, let's say, J's, we are talking about mines, we are talking about high burden areas, and the burden is very high. The so likelihood that a lot of people will be infected is much higher. So you have to go and screen this kind of people. So you are going to screen large people. Now it is practically not possible, and economically also not possible, to test all these people into one place. So you have to have better means. TB always had one more tool earlier, which got discontinued for some reason later on, and that was X-ray. X-ray was the tool essentially used for 20 years ago, for TB, just in case. people can be just X-ray and see that But it got discontinued fundamentally because it meant a lot of and x-rays and everything and then microscopy became a 
city of Jerusalem, the Tulis are a made up. But maybe really it is in that it's this for me, the whole solution. Plus, pretty interesting. But it's never considered. The problem with it's really an interpretation of the East, that's easy. So a lot of people who don't have TV may be called as TV. But the sensitivity is high. And that's what you need for a screening group. So now the page was clearly said that the X-ray can be used as a screening group. But a confirmation of all possible way X-ray must be done more this year. Or a little bit. So that is what today we are talking about in real world term modulation case and day. Where you are able to now do X-ray and multi-test together. So one limitation of this was X-rays traditionally are big machines. So they are not portable, they are not point of care. So again it becomes a centralized in the situation, that was a limiting factor. But now, like Malbio, very, very portable or ultra portable X-ray machines are being developed, which just looks like a camera. You can take it with you like a camera, you can just take a picture of the chest, and then you have the X-ray, it's a digital X-ray, so the digital X-ray can push to a cloud, and then the AI solution can be implemented through an artificial intelligence technology, which can automatically interpret the result. So you don't even need a technician. And that is good enough. And all positives coming from that report can be confirmed by the technology. So this concept is now gaining a lot of momentum of doing X-ray and molecular together. And these ultra portable X-rays are becoming something of a huge aid in enabling this to happen. And TrueNet is always a portable and a portable tool. So TrueNet can be carried anywhere. Now the X-ray machine can be carried anywhere. Now, how do you deliver? Is the question. You can do it in fixed models, but now you can also do it in mobile solutions. So you have this TB bands, for example, where the TB band has a digital X-ray, the ultra portable X-ray, and you also have the TrueNet machine. These are not even bands now, they have become something like a 4 by 4 ratio, small ratio in which both the pronat as well as the X-ray can be taken together. People can be tested with the speed with the X-ray and not interpreted through the AI and all the positive cases and can be confirmed by a molecular test right there. On the same day, all this can be done. And really truly positive patients can then be directly taken into the program and given time. So that is what is now getting momentum. So the WHO came to us and said, can we do a Google solution for that? And Timur Lisse is a very high degree button. It's all degree, but I have So we were voted to start from there. So we developed this platform for them. And we were now already working in Timur Lisse. Working very well, they are very happy. And in fact, this city is already showing quite well. And Timur Lisse now wants to add more. So there's a large, let's uh, say, plan to get these ultra portable states and these adventures and put them in hands for these kind of public homes and take them across the country and it's been large operations. So India is doing it. The global fund is now again talking about it. So they have asked us to tell them what we can do. So again, this is another area which is getting monitored. So TV elimination would mean that you also have to do that. And this is a good solution for them. In addition, we are also working on some more technologies which can be used for triage. And one such technology is uh, the cuff signal. And you can actually, from the cuff signal, also through an AI, and identify people with TB. So the TB cuff is some, in some way different to all the other cuffs. So they can be picked up by this. And then that goes through the AI to the processing and you get a report. So it looks very promising. A lot of validations are going to start. Mm -hmm. So we already have a test for that. We are also getting into the validation phase. Once the validation is done, probably there can be another batch. One more technology that we are working on is what's called serology, where you are working for looking at antibodies in the blood to TB. Right? So nothing new about it. Accepting that, also the earlier ones failed because you cannot discriminate between active TV and active TV. And we want to see active TV. So now we 
we have some very special, uh, let's say, markers that we have to do. That is the best to research. And those markers are right now in dead antibodies, which are specifically for activity. And because antibodies are abundantly in there in your blood, so the sensitivity is still here. So you're able to pick up TB very, very easily. So probably this could be the most sensitive to positive to the Ebola. This is in the last stages of prediction about to start validation now. So going forward, a lot of tools are going to be available. But today we already have the tools, the electrophotical X-ray and the magnetic resolution, which can already be deployed. I'm sure that in the next two years or three years, we will ensure matches to be replaced. And uh, globally, okay. India will probably do it in another year or so. But globally also they should be able to do it in another two or three years. That will itself self tell the tone of the definition. So Cronet is a multi disease platform. We can today test for about 35 to 40 different diseases. And this will keep enlarging. But having a multi disease platform ensures that even at the peripheral level, once you deploy these kind of machines for TV at the peripheral level, you can do a lot more, not just TV. And once your TV load starts coming down, then you focus on other areas. So, malaria, for example. Now, malaria testing happens through one of the other tests, at the diagnostic test, which are very simple tests. They are working fine right now because the malaria burden is very high. So, the overall parasite load, you know. Malaria positive patient is high. And so these kind of tests are able to pick those kind of patients. So today the current sensitivity of these tests are good enough as a screening tool. But as you start going for elimination, the parasite loads will start coming down. And still be clinically important. It will still cause malaria. But the load will be lower. And then these tests will start really won't work. So you will need more sensitivity. So molecular diagnostics again, molecular terms are the only ones which will be able to, you know, work with the elimination happening to ensure that the elimination process happens properly. All people with malaria are diagnosed with the of that malaria. So that awareness is coming. So the Indian National Vector Bond Disease Control Program has already decided that they are going to put a molecular test in Kromat in the algorithm. Apart from that, you can also do HIV weapon group. HIV. The big issue now that really will control the disease globally, but there are many people living with HIV. Mm -hmm. And these people will not actually put on treatment. So we have very good treatment regimen now. So uh, yeah, that's just something for the patient outcome. But uh, these treatment cocktails that are given work only for some time and then they fail. So that will get them very high. Then you we should be able to detect that in the And for the new regime, so that the, because the patients are already getting resistant to the previous ones. So you change the drug regime so that they can continue to be uh, treated. So for doing that, you have to have some measure. So earlier people were using something called CD4. But then soon it became clear that CD4 by itself is not a great indicator of the So the real Impact would come only when you look actually for their viral load. So, WHO made it mandatory that all treatment monitoring for HIV patients must be done through a viral load test. When you say viral load test, it means that you have to be able to penetrate the virus, which can again be done only through a molecular test. So, molecular tests are now being adopted very uh, extensively for monitoring patients on HIV so that we can detect the treatment video. So that is again at the moment centralized. So, but decentralized tools like Pronat will enable that people don't have to come to the world for testing. You can do it like that. So, the same machine we use for TV and we use for other group and we use for the video. Another area which has become very important is habit test, B and C. And both of them cause a lot of data. But uh, again, like a chubby, there is no treatment. There was no treatment for it. And so it will have to be a good for treatment and monitoring. Again, for monitoring, the molecular test became an important thing. But for hepatitis C, today we have a cure. So if you find somebody with hepatitis C, you can treat the person and cure him of the disease. 
which means that of course the patient of course is still but it doesn't give the disease on the So on that basis now there is a hepatitis C elimination program that is starting. Which means that they will now want to screen large population for hepatitis C so that those people can be then contained and so you can cut transmission and go towards the elimination. So that is going to be a large area. We will still need this kind of order care tools like to that one more elimination target that's coming up is for COVID-19. It is caused by a virus called human papilloma virus, HPV. So molecular deaths can diagnose an HPV infection. So that's again looked up as now a way to screen women population in a large scale to look for the virus, and if they have the virus, they have the virus. So this is now being taken as well as a global objective now and there's already some targets being set so there is a target from WHO which says that 70% uh, of women should be screened for HPV by 2030 and 90% by 2035 it's a tall one so they need for one like this again and once again it's in the importance of having a peripheral so we cannot expect women to travel to the centralized location just as well. So you will have to go to the So again, Kronat has a platform playing a very significant role. Although right now we are talking TV because that's a major information company. But on the sidelines, you are also going to have to So that you can serve HIV, cancer, malaria elimination. So the multiple verticals are now coming together. In India, the Indian government is trying to see if they can combine all the verticals for diagnostics and use student machines. The discussion will be. Welcome, friends, to this special episode of NTB Dialogues. To detect TB is to fight TB. Diagnosis, early and accurate diagnosis of tuberculosis, continues to remain the most important entry point to towards. TB care pathway which will lead us to, towards to TB elimination. So today we have someone amongst us whose contributions and whose led teams have uh, helped countries like India for instance detect TB early and accurately. Most molecular tests done across India are TRUNAT which is a product of MolBio Diagnostics. So we have amongst us Mr. Shriram Natarajan founder and chief executive officer of MolBio and who, who will be sharing insights of how TrueNAT is making a difference in the responses towards tuberculosis but as well as about 40 other diseases in terms of early and accurate diagnosis. This molecular test is a point of care, decentralized, battery operated and has been rolled out in very innovative manners. So without any further ado, let's listen to Mr. Shriram. So, Mr. Shriram Natarajan, we, as we know, governments had committed to NTB by 2030. Government of India has committed to end it by 2025. Uh, so, about 90 months have passed by, 90 months are left for the global elimination and about 28 months are left for uh, TB elimination in the country, in India. So, uh, in terms of uh, diagnosing TB, diagnosing early and accurately and screening all the people not just uh, those with symptoms, to what extent have we uh, made a progress? See, TB as a disease has been there from centuries. It's a very, very old disease. Mankind has been fighting this disease for a very long time. And it's actually co evolved with mankind. So, the TB bacteria is very difficult and it can go and have many parts of your body and escape the immune system. And that's where we find that TB has been quite a deadly disease. So this was a big uh, thing that the entire world was tackling because TB was killing a lot of people. Even today, TB kills more people than what COVID did. But COVID was a big news, but TB is not really the kind of big news. But the fact remains that TB is a big problem. So about uh, two years back, the decision was taken that TB elimination is not happening. Till that time, and even today for that matter, the TB testing happens through a century-old technology, which is called fear microscope. 
that technology has not changed. And this technology has a limitation. The technology can sensitivity is a problem. Which means that, you know, it's only about 40 to 50 people out of 100 people in the TV get diagnosed and put on treatment. And the rest, 40 to 50 people are told they don't have TV. So these people go back to the community thinking that they don't have TV and they give TV to lot of people. Many studies have been done and they have proved that one TV patient can give TV to about 17 to 20 people in India. And in a country like India, or on average, it takes about three years for someone to get diagnosed. So that means that every TV person is given TV to TV. So that is the reason why in spite of, you know, there is a program called the DOS program, which was initiated by the WHO and implemented now by which you can do it in India. And this program says that every TV person must be in a certain kind of treatment. And the testing has to happen through, right now, a microscopic and then put on And this has been there for about the more than 30 years now. And in spite of 30 years of intervention, where all the governments, including Indian government, is getting free diagnosis and free treatment, TV has not come down. In fact, it's got worse. And the drug resistant forms of TV are getting even worse. So it was, it was a big cause of concern. So about four or five years back, the government community sat down to see why is this, why are we not able to you know, handle it? And clearly, the mandate came out that the issue was with the diagnosis. And so, if you don't diagnose in time, then the people are giving to you the pain. And then, the second issue came up was irrational treatment. All kinds of antibiotics are being given because people thought they don't have TB, but they are coming. So, all that led to a lot of drug resistance, and that made things more complicated. As you rightly said, about five years, five to seven years back is when molecular tools started appearing in our eyes. And uh, so then, earlier the molecular tools were more centralized, which made it very difficult because all the people are in the collection. And the system was not working because it was putting some money and reporting. It took a long time and patients don't come back because the program, they don't get the treatment, they go back and they never come back. So it completely failed. So they have to have better diagnostic tools which can be done as a new So fortunately, uh, one technology came about seven years ago and another technology has come recently which is uh, All these technologies are now enabling TV diagnosis through molecular design and being at the three peripheral level at the place where we just it. So that has changed the entire outlook and based on this trend, the world decided that we'll go for elimination targets with the view that we will eliminate microscopy completely and replace all microscopy with the molecular test, which will ensure that all TV patients are diagnosed in time and put on treatment. And that is how we can get the transmission of TV and also prevent further spread and the threat resistance spread. So that's where TrueNet comes in the future. Today, globally, TrueNet is the only platform which can actually be deployed at the microscopy. Even the earlier platform which started could only go up to a district level, couldn't go to the primary level. So there was still a limitation. And that is why you see uh, with all this technology is available, even today 70% of testing still happens on the microscopy. Only about 25% of the microscopy. So that has to change. So in the last, if you ask me 90 months, what has happened? A decision has been taken that molecular tests have to be introduced, microscopy has to be replaced, and the tools are getting validated and approved and so on, all that has happened. And some implementation has started. India, for example, has already rolled out Trunac in a fairly large way. And they are very clear that in the next two, two years or so, they want to replace the many microscopy. Globally, still a, a long way to go because they still are in the process of adopting these technologies. I think from what I have seen, a lot of momentum now, because nobody has realized as I said, time is running out, elimination targets are coming very closer, and now there is a time for action. So the tools are there, the will is there, implementation has just started happening. So hopefully in the next 19 months, we should start seeing a lot of energy here. 
I'm sure that in the next two years or three years, we will ensure matters will be in place. And, uh, globally, okay. India will probably do it in another year or so. But globally also, they should be able to do it in another two or three years. That will itself tell the tone of the organization. In addition to that, what is also important is to when you diagnose TB, you also have it's important to know that the patient is not a response to the So these molecular tools are also helping that. It's not the first part of contact. Not only are you diagnosing TB, but you're also finding out if the patient will and what drug will work for the patient to give the right drug. So that the patient gets better and it is stop spreading the disease for the people. So that is the trend that is happening. So at this point of time I can say India is a little ahead compared to the rest of the world. So they started rebuilding it much faster. But India is also the highest delivered country, probably the highest delivered country in the world. India only goes to 29% of all the delivered. So India has to have the same thing there. But being a large country, although they have initiated, they still have to go a long way. Because today, for example, about 5,000 centers are thinking about the test. They have about 24,000 centers. So we will take them time to do all that. But they are working on a concept of trying to see that they will make it decentralized but still bring in some traffic from the other area so that with about 8 to 10,000 centers we should be able to manage so far in the first stage of the Indian plan. Globally also as I said there is a lot of momentum happening of the global fund is struggling in a bigger way. Global fund's mandate was always to do TV, HIV and media. But uh, they have realized that because the target eliminate targets are coming closer, they are focusing more on the, the funding is happening more for TV. The fact that if you replace the metroscopy, you already have gone to that kind of a stage. The TV will get involved. Indian government is very, very geared up now. And the directive is very clear. There would be no change in the target date for elimination. So the program is working on I hear now, and everybody in the South focus on this. So that activity is already visible in India. So clearly, they want to do it. And we just had a global fund meeting, and we just had a meeting also. And globally, the situation is the same. And although they have a little bit more time in India, but even then, it's still limited time. It's not too much of time. And if they don't have it now, they will never be able to reach. So that is very clear. And as I said, the bill is clear, global community is not coming to the money is coming to the free country is contributing so So definitely I think with this kind of uh, at momentum there will be significant action happening. We should be able to do it sooner than later. So Cronat is a multi business platform. We can today test for about 35 to 40 different diseases and this will keep enlarging. But Having a military business platform ensures that even at the peripheral level, once you deploy these kind of machines for TV at the peripheral level, you can do a lot more, not just TV. And once your TV load starts coming down, then you focus on other areas. So, malaria, for example. Now, malaria testing happens through what happens in the test, rapid diagnostic test, which are very simple tests. They are working fine right now because the malaria burden is pretty high. So, the overall parasite load. Yeah. Malaria positive patient is high. And so these kind of tests are able to pick those kind of patients. So today the current sensitivity of these tests are good enough as a screening tool. But as you start going for elimination, the parasite loads will start coming down. And it will be clinically important. It still cause malaria. But the load will be lower. And then these tests will start telling. It won't work. So you will need more sensitivity. So molecular diagnostics again, molecular tools are the only ones which will be able to, you know, work with the elimination happening. To ensure that the elimination process happens properly. All people with malaria are diagnosed with the so that malaria can be So that awareness is coming. So the Indian National Vector Bond Disease Control Program has already decided that they are going to put a molecular test in Kronat in the algorithm. So that will be part of the algorithm now. Unless the program designs and takes it into the phone, but the implementation cannot happen. So that's already happening in India. So Global Fund, for example, is also realizing this. So they also are now looking at 
So you will have to go to the DC. So again, Pruneat has a platform playing a very significant role. Although right now we are talking TV because that's a major application company. But on the sidelines, you also have made advantages to the CMC. So that is concerned, I shall be the other one. So you really have an issue. So the vertical and verticals are now coming together. In India, the Indian government is trying to see if they can combine all the verticals for diagnostics power and use two hundred machines. The discussions are going on. But right now, every program has its own priorities and the trends and the of But I think that's going to happen soon. Similarly, Global Fund is now asking us about Delta Tess and the one that's going to be the Delta Tess will now get the So that when they're deploying these machines for TV, they can also approve the existing for other businesses. So they are very, very keen that this should happen. So we are also, of course, looking at the temperature and the people education. And I think in the next couple of years, we'll have most of our businesses and the technology, which means that the global fund and other agencies can actually you know, fund for implementation of these diagnostics in all the developing countries. And countries like India also can go to their verticals and see that every, let's say, Afghan medical center can do all these tests using a tool. So that is the long term goal. And I think we are all going towards both the strengths of the government is playing a role and the state governments are playing a role. And abroad in Africa, the retaliation fund is So global fund is stepping in for it. And Asia, for example, is partly getting funds, partly using the money. But there is a huge awareness that these have to be eliminated. And the thrust is coming also from the developed world because from COVID everybody has seen that it is not one country's problem. That starts its own country's problem can go to any country. People are moving, people are traveling. And so the disease is traveling with the people. So nobody is safe. So that they have realized. So the developed countries are doing it for their own benefit that they don't get these diseases and putting money, but that's the country in developing countries. Solving these problems. See, if you want to do TV elimination, then you have to catch all people in the TV and put them on TV. Otherwise, you are not eliminated. So, while the current program is treating symptomatic people, they are the ones who come to the country. And so, they come with symptoms already. They are already criteria defined to say who's going to test for TV, let's say. So these are symptomatic But there are, as you rightly said, a lot of asymptomatic people, just like what we saw in COVID, who don't have clinical symptoms, but they still have pain. And they can give TB to other people. So unless you catch these also asymptomatic people, they are not going to be able to do it. So that's very clear. So that's why WHO started this discussion about active case finding. So when you say active case finding, what you are trying to do is to go and reach out to people who don't know that they are TV. But they have. So you are trying to pick up those people up and take them into the program. So now that means that you have to screen that for patients. So like family and relatives of relatives and friends of patients who have been in close contacts of the patients that take patients. Uh, we're talking about slum areas for example, where the patients are not great and TV spreads much more in these kind of situations. We are talking about uh, Say J's, we are talking about mines, we are talking about high burden areas. And Delta actually burden is very high. The likelihood that a lot of people will be infected is much higher. So you have to go and screen this kind of people. So you're going to screen large populations. Now it is practically not possible, and economically also not possible, to test all these people into one clinic. So you have to have better means. TB always had one more tool earlier which got discontinued for some reason later on, and that was X-ray. X-ray was the tool that essentially used about 20 years ago for TV, just X-rays. Every people can read just X-ray and see that the patient has a TV or not. But uh, it got discontinued fundamentally because it meant a lot of techniques and X-rays and everything, and then it might have to be a similar tool, so it slowly sort of died down. But today people are realizing that X-rays could be a good solution for screening purposes. Because X-rays are sensitive. 
The problem with X-ray and interpretation is the specific. So a lot of people who don't have TB may be called as TB. But the sensitivity is high. And that's what you need for a screening tool. So now the WHO is clearly said that the X-ray can be used as a screening tool. But a confirmation of all possible X-ray must be done in the PCR or a molecular test. So that is what today we are talking about in real world term multidentic testing. Now you are able to now do X-ray and multidentic test together. So one limitation of this was X-rays traditionally are big machines. So they are not portable, they are not point of care. So again it becomes a centralized in the situation, that was a limiting factor. But now, like Malbio, very, very portable or ultra portable X-ray machines are being developed, which just looks like a camera. You can take it with you like a camera, you can just take a picture of the chest. And then you have the X-ray, it's a digital X-ray, so the digital X-ray can be artificially I mean, uh, pushed to a cloud and then the, an AI solution can be implemented through an artificial intelligence technology which can automatically interpret the result, so you don't even need a technician and that is good enough and all positives coming from that report can be confirmed by a technology test. So this concept is now gaining a lot of momentum. Doing X-ray and molecular together, and these ultra portable X-rays are becoming something of a huge aid in enabling this to happen. And TrueNet is always a portable and a portable scale tool, so TrueNet can be carried anywhere. Now the X-ray machine can be carried anywhere. Now, how do you deliver? Is the question. You can do it in fixed models, but now you can also do it in mobile solutions. So you have this TB bands for example, where the TB band has a digital X-ray, the ultra portable X-ray, and you also have the Trunet machine. These are not even bands now, they have become something like a 4 by 4 vehicle, small vehicle in which both the Trunet as well as the X-ray can be taken together. People can be tested with the speed with the X-ray and not interpreted through the AI and all the positive cases then can be confirmed by AI. Molecular test right there. On the same day, all this can be done. And really, truly positive patients can then be directly taken into the program and given treatment. So, that is what is now getting momentum. So, the WHO came to us and said, Can we do a mobile solution? Then? And Timo Lisse is a very high degree but He's a small country, but a high degree So, we were voted to start from there. So, we developed this platform for them. Now, already working in Timo Working very well, and very happy. The impact is already showing quite well. And Timo Lisse now wants to add more, and it's already covered the WHO. And WHO also ordered for machines for Bangladesh to give two banks of money for the WHO. And now they are in the process of trying to see how they can expand this to The Indian government is also now looking at it. So, Indian government is already doing active case funding, but not using X ray. That's why interviewing people and they realize that that is not really going to work because it's ego that is open. An asymptomatic person they just does not know how they are going to tell you. So they are also now wanting to scale up the X-ray part. So there is a large, let's say, plan to get these ultra portable X-rays and these are very cheap and put them in hands or these kind of portable forms and take them across the country and it's been large. So India is doing it. The global fund is now again talking about it. So they have asked us to tell them what we can do. So again, this is another area of engineering momentum. So TB elimination would mean that you also have to do vaccine cancer. And this is a good solution for that. In addition, we are also working on some more technologies which can be used for triage. And one such technology is use the cuff And you can actually, from the cup signal, also through an AI, and identify people with TB. So the TB cup is some, in some way different to all the other cups. So that can be picked up by this uh, cup so that is recorded, and then that goes through an AI to processing, and you get a report. So it looks very promising. A lot of validations are going to start. So we already have a test for that. We're also getting into validation. Once the validation is done, probably just going to be another batch.
one more technology that we are working on is what's called serology. That we are working for looking at no antibodies in the blood to TB. Right? So nothing new about it, excepting that also the radio won't stay in because you cannot discriminate between active TB and active TB. And we want to we want to see active TB. So now we we have some very special uh, let's say markers that we have to give to identify through research and those markers are now in antibodies which are specific only for antibodies and because antibodies are abundantly there in your blood so the sensitivity is extremely high so you are able to pick up TB very very easily so probably this could be the most sensitive to positive to the whole arm this is in the last stages of completion about to start validation now. So going forward, a lot of tools are going to be available. But today we already have the tools, the electrophotical X-ray and the two-night resolution, which can all be given to us. Thank you. As we know, the United Nations high-level meeting is on TB. The second UNHLN on TB is going to be held later this month in September 2023. So uh, you are likely to be there. So I like to know what what is your call to the world leaders? I think the expectation even from the first meeting was that there will be a much larger commitment than what actually happened. And there was a little bit of a disappointment to the TB uh, stakeholders. So they were expecting some much more uh, impactful kind of a message coming from there and commitments coming from there. At this time, I think by seeing all the activities that have already happened and the tools are really available, the fact that it can be done, it is expected that the invention of this time for TV is going to be very strongly uh, you know, making commitments and pushing forward to the projects. So, and since everybody knows that there are uh, you know, you know, machine targets, this is a good as a very key meeting. And I think the leaders all have to commit to it because, see, ultimately, you also end up a lot of people die unnecessarily. And if all the people can be saved just by introducing the right tools. So, apart from anything else, there's already a huge human activity. And then the spread in the further issues coming. And that is a different story altogether. So I think the message is clear. It's very clear that it can be eliminated. It's very clear that tools are already available and more tools will come. But unless you implement those tools and actually implement action plans on the ground, it cannot be done. And that needs money. So first is to say yes, we want to do it. Categorically, get all the world leaders to get committed to it. And second is to see that something can happen and do the best to put all the capability that's required. Because we are just talking about another five to six years on the global intervention that I've got for seven years. So not too much of time, so a lot more effort and a lot more money will be We are expecting that commitments to come this way. Thank you so much, Mr. Natarajan. Friends, we were listening to Mr. Sri Ram Natarajan founder and chief executive officer of Mole Biodiagnostics, which has uh, one of its products is TrueNet, which is uh, a molecular test, a decentralized and point of care molecular test, which is really making a difference in terms of uh, making diagnosis available, accessible to uh, people who perhaps need it most in very, very remote parts of the countries, uh, especially TB high burden countries. All the best, Mr. Natarajan, for the upcoming UNHLM and all your efforts towards making early and accurate diagnosis of diseases a reality for the people most indeed. Thank you. Thanks.